Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with Mildred and Finster. Some of you wondering where Finster is. Well, Finster is a much more independent cat. She doesn't follow me around the way Mildred does. And Mildred is quite curious that she's here. She usually sleeps beyond us in the cat tree while we're doing these things. And uh, I wanted to at least let her have a cameo for a minute before I put her down and let her go. The other thing is she's a long haired cat, which means I'm going to be covered with fur when I put her down. Mildred is a nice, tidy, short haired cat. All right, sweetie, you ready to go down? Thank you. Thank you for putting in an appearance. But Finster is far calmer than Mildred, which is kind of interesting. You know, Mildred is sort of, you know, neurotic, whereas Finster is pretty mellow when you pick her up and all that. Anyway, there you go. And now I have to go, I'm going to have to brush myself rather thoroughly because it's spring and she's shedding and, you know, but there you go. There are the two sisters. I am here to talk about today, this reissue. Um, I've noticed if you look like through the classical sections on Amazon of like what's coming up that in Japan, um, Universal seems to be re-releasing everything that their whole catalog as individual CDs back like they used to in the old days. See, these are like Japanese. But this one was a valuable one. I mean, I had it. I had it for a long time um, anyway. And so I thought that I would mention it because it's Raphael Kubelik doing Dvorak, which you always want. Um, and you have his complete legends and the symphonic variations. Now, the symphonic variations you could get separately. I mean, it was like in this, if you had this three disc Dvorak thing, um, you could get the you could get the symphonic variations. It's the overtures and tone poems and Slavonic dances, but it didn't include the legends. And so if you want to get the legends with the English Chamber Orchestra, by the way, it wasn't with Bavarian Radio. It was a separate disc. It's like this disc. So uh, this was the way you got, you can get the legends. And then otherwise it disappeared. Um, and that's why I think this is sort of an, an important re-release if you're collecting Kubelik. Now, of course, the complete Kubelik Deutsche Grammophon box, which is sitting up, up there. So up there it is, Kubelik. Yes, this big DG Kubelik box. I, I know, Mildred, it was up there. <laughs> Thank you, dear. Okay. Now we're now we're just alone. Um, the two cats can go play. I I really think it's crazy the way you know the legacy of these people has been treated. You would think that for Kubelik, someone like Kubelik, who is so well known for Dvorak, you know, there's also his symphony box, which I have I'm sitting back right back there. Well, let me put this away. It goes right here in the shelf. Um, but if you had you know Kubelik's Dvorak symphonies. Um, why don't they just do a coupe that plays Dvorak and throw it all in a box? You know, a nice, reasonably priced box. That would be delicious, wouldn't it? And if you don't know Dvorak's legends, I mean, it was originally another one of those piano forehand things. He dedicated them to the critic Hanslick, actually, which was a politically astute move. Um, they are 10 miniatures. Um, we don't know what legends they talk about. They don't have any particular titles, but they are gorgeous miniatures. They last anywhere from three and a bit to like five and a bit minutes long. Um, some interesting Dvorak tunes from elsewhere show up in them. Most notably, the slow movement of the Third Symphony pops up in, I think it's number six. Um, you, know, the, you know the tune? Da, 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 Oh, it's, it's so beautiful. Such a beautiful theme. So that pops up in one of the legends. And uh, I mean, they're, they're vintage Dvorak from his, his early, you know, middle maturity, early middle, whatever you call it. The maturity is Slavonic dance period. And, you know, it was the Sixth Symphony. And when he was going like gangbusters, turning out one fabulous thing after another, the Czech suite and all this stuff. There, it, it's such gorgeous, gorgeous music. I've never heard them played live. I've never seen anyone want to do them. There are 10 of them. Um, you can do them in sets. They're published, actually. I have the, the full scores um, in, in, in groups of five, one through five and six through 10. I don't know why they don't get performed. I mean, what a beautiful encore they would be. Chamber, it's for, for chamber orchestra. I, everyone should be doing them all the time. I mean, there's not a, a, a weak note anywhere in them. They're just 
fantastic pieces. So you really should know them if you don't. Um, and this is a gorgeous performance, beautiful performance that somehow slips through the cracks all the time when Kubelik's Dvorak gets talked about. So I just wanted to mention, I mean, it may be a bit pricey now, I mean, because it's a Japanese import and all that stuff, but it's available and it's a necessary supplement to your Kubelik Dvorak stuff. If you don't have it, the big box, or you don't have it any other way, or if you have the symphonies and you have the tone poems, but you don't have this. So there they are, my friends. Keep on listening. And thank you so much for joining me. And thank you to Mildred and Finster for their participation. Take care.